The sleeve is based in. I'm going to base those into position. And I like it. I do like it. I think because the pattern on the blouse is quite busy, that you, you won't be able to tell the sleeve is back to front for a start. But it's okay. Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. I'm here to share my skill and knowledge to inspire you to refashion clothing. If you are new to my channel, consider subscribing and let's get started. So, this blouse is going to be refashioned. It's what I would refer to as an ugly blouse. It's um, it really doesn't have any nice features about it that I would want to feature on. So the way I go about my projects is that I choose, the best way for anybody really, is to choose an element within the garment, a feature within the garment that you like and focus on that and make that the focus point and then kind of work around that idea, keeping it there of what other parts you want to change in order to suit your body type or particular style that you're aiming for. So at the moment, I don't like the sleeves, don't like the front, don't like the buttons, <laughs> don't like the fastening. The only part I like is the back and also the print. That's what drew me to this is the actual print, this chocolate brown, this kind of dark powder blue color combination, gorgeous. Um, so let's work on the idea that we're going to be doing some adjustments to the neckline in order to make sure this fits comfortably at the front. And the way I approach my project is that I have a vague idea about what I'm looking for, um, but it may or may not work out. Um, and as I go along, I'll explain reasons why I'm doing certain te techniques and reasons I don't use certain techniques. So let's get started on the project. This is how the blouse fits me. It's several sizes too big, which is a plus. Um, and um, as you can see, it's doing nothing for me. So the best thing to do is to turn it around. So that's what I'll do. So I can show you the difference without even doing anything to it. Okay. So I've turned it round. So you add the belt to this and yeah, it's made a lot of difference. So what I'm going to do is I'll need to lower the back neckline because it is kind of, I can, I can feel that. So I need to lower that because your front of your neck is always lower than the back when it comes to, you know, this type of garment. The facing in this is a plus because it's quite long the base and it comes to here. So I think what I will do is I'll, I'll make a keyhole slit here, um, which is going to be good. I'm going to remove the sleeves, um, but I want to use this feature of the sleeve here, this opening and the cuff. So maybe I turn the sleeve upside down some way. And I do want to be able to slip this over a polar neck, as you can see I'm wearing one now. So I, I, I want to shape it somehow. And I may, let me just turn you around. The buttons I just don't like, so they're gonna have to go. Um, so I may, yeah, I may remove the button stand. Well, let's see how it goes, because it's gonna take several fittings in order to make sure that I'm happy with the end result. Now that I've tried it on, I decided that the sleeves are going to go. I am also going to remove this section here, this button stand. Let me just show you that. Just unbutton. Yeah, I'm going to remove the button stand and the buttonhole stand. I'm going to remove that. The front is going to become the back, so there's going to be a V-shaping 
to the back of the blouse. I know it's got the bust dots in, but it is a refashion project. Um, so as long as it's it's roomy and it's big, it shouldn't be a real big fitting issue. And like I said, I'm going to remove the sleeves. Now for the front of the blouse, which is the old back, I'm going to put a slit down here, like a keyhole slit. So it's really got a, a really long facing here to the back, which is really helping me with the design. And then I'm going to then lower the back neckline so it fits a little bit more comfortable to the front. So that's what I'm going to do first, is just remove the sleeves and remove the back button stands. And I'm at this stage now that I've cut away the button stand and I've cut away the sleeves. So the next thing we need to focus on is going to be the neckline, lowering the neckline. And then once we've done that, it will be doing a slit to about roughly about here before we decide to close up the back. So let's get to that now. So get the facing and turn it to the wrong side. So the wrong side is facing down on the table and try and get this as flat as possible. Okay, I've got my sewing gauge and I'm gonna put it roughly in the center. Let me just fold this in half so I can find this center. Yeah, just put a pin in as a marker. Okay, and from that point there, I'm going to come down one centimeter, no, 2.5 centimeter, one inch, and put a marker there. So this will be the shaping for the neckline. And this is where I'm going to actually stitch. So I'm going to take to my sewing machine and sew all the way to this point here. I'll just put in a couple more pins. Like so. So you can get start here and then you start to sew around a curve and that will make it sit a lot better at the front of your body. I've sewn in a new neckline, so I'm going to cut that away. And but you can always mark with a marker of chalk the shape of your neckline. If you don't, don't want to do it the way I did, which was just pin and uh, just eyeball it, but it does take the experience to get it looking nice and neat. Let's clip into neckline so that it sits into the inside of the garments quite nicely and easily. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice shape. So what will need to happen then is you need to then understitch to make sure that the facing stays on the inside. But we're not going to do that just yet. And remember to check the descriptions for links to sewing techniques. Okay, really happy with that. Okay, so the next step is to get the line down the center in which we're going to have this opening, a, very, a slit, like a keyhole opening, but it's going to be a slither. I don't want it to be too big. You can do, but um, I don't want it to be that big. So I'll just pin there for a moment. Make sure it's down the center. Make sure this is lying nice and flat. Like so. You want to be even on both sides, and not that I'm aiming for perfection, maybe I am, I don't know. Right, okay. 
and then we get a pin at this point here. Okay. There we go. Get my chalk. Get my pattern master a ruler will do. This is a form of ruler, pattern drafting ruler. I'm just going to draw a straight line down to this point here. Like so. This is where I'm going to stop. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple of pins in there just to keep it in place as I sew. That should be okay. You don't want it to, to move about as you're sewing, you just want to keep it as flat as possible. That way you finish with a neat looking feature. So what I'm going to do now is take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to use this as a guide. So my feet will be what will keep me a distance away from this guideline here. So I'm just going to sew down like that, around and back up again. And then I'll be able to cut into it then. So let's take that to the sewing machine now. The facing is now being sewn. So all I need to do is then get my scissors and cut along that line. Stop about here, go into the corners. And I'm done. And it's just a case of then just pushing it through. Like so. And there we're done. Just needs to be under, do under stitching and needs to be pressed. And yeah, it's looking nice already. So um, it's going to be a case of then is the wrong size so I can show you. As you can tell it's, it just needs pressing and under stitching. Under stitching here to here and here and then press and then that should be fine. Okay and then I'm probably will do I don't know whether I'll do a tie or see what's left over from the scraps that I may have. So the next step once you have done that will be to sew the back closed. Now you may think about an accident here, I haven't. It was the button stand was sewn into, it was the buttonhole actually that was sewn onto here. I mean that's what happens when it comes to some manufacturing details so unfortunately I have to do a bigger seam than I would prefer but it is what it is. So it's just a case then of getting some pins, just a couple of pins should do and then do a seam finish. Actually Mm. May do a French seam. Yeah, I'm going to do. I'm going to do a French seam. So if I'm going to do a French seam, I have to do it the other way around. Links to that technique will be in the description.
and took it to my sewing machine and then sew a French seam. I have sewn the French seam and also the facing. That isn't French seam, that's going to be cut away. I'll just show you what it looks like on the right side. It's fine. This is the back. It's a nice V. That just needs pressing once I've cut away the excess fabric. And let me just flip it over and show you the front. Oh, that is so nice. So there's that opening I was talking about. And it's been understitched and I've pressed it. I just need to press that. And then the details at the front and the back are then complete. I then need to focus on the sleeves. So I'm gonna do a little fitting and let's see how we can make it a little bit more fitted to my body. So I want to use the straps and use as much as this as I can, all of it. Um, and then we'll focus on the sleeve. So let's go and do this fitting and let's see what ideas I come up with. Okay, this is gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Sits on my shoulders quite nicely. Okay, so it's about to get this, because it's quite boxy. Oh, I'm not liking what's happening here. But it is a top that I'm going to pull over my head. Oh no, that doesn't look very attractive. Right, let me have... So I'm going to take in a little bit on the underarm seam that the sleeve goes into. Yeah, I will do. That means the sleeves will be big, bigger than the armhole, which means I'll gather it a little bit on the shoulders or do an inverted pleat, whichever is gonna suit the top. Right, boxing this now. So, because there's no other way of me getting into it. Um, hmm. No. No. See, this is what's left over. This is the button stands, and I was thinking maybe I could do a tie effect at the sides. That could be. That could work. Hmm. I may have to make this the last decision to make once I've um, put the sleeves in, I think. Yeah. It could. Could work. Um, yeah. Or I could have it at the back. Just turn around. Maybe I could put it into the back and you know, do a little tie fit there somehow. Could be an option. See, pull it in. That looks quite nice actually. Pulled in. But well, I definitely need to, yeah, that looks a lot better if I take away some from this side seam. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is take some away from the side seams and then I'm going to figure out what style of sleeve that I actually do want and then I'll leave the ties until the end. So they may be at the sides or maybe at the back. Those are the only two options. Okay, so work on this side seam and take it in about that much on each side and then I'll just taper it 
down into the original seam should be about there and then just repeat it on the other side so I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and do that now and then once that is done we'll focus on the sleeve okay I've sewn the side seam and I'm just going to trim that away and I do the same on the other side and then we'll just focus on the sleeves so I've got the sleeve here and we now know that the sleeve is too big for the top because I've taken it in the side seams and do remember that if you're going to do that that to try it on to make sure it goes over your head which I did and it was okay so I like the cuff I want the cuff to be because it tapers down I can't I can't use this part as the new sleeve head. Okay. Right. So I removed the buttons because as you know, I didn't like the buttons, they were just horrible. Um, so this is going to be too big. So we'll take in that, that much. So it will fit right back into the sleeve head. So I'll more than likely give it a little tuck like that. That's quite nice actually, that looks quite cool. Yeah, I think I might stick with that. Yeah, I like that. So, what I'll then do is get a pin and then just place that in position like so. And then I'll take it to my sewing machine and just sew straight across. Right, so solve that problem. Right. I could, I could gather it down the center of the sleeve and just leave that open. Let's see what happens. We'll do a couple of pleats. Let's see. Get my pins, change my ring. <laughs> well, um, yeah. This, at this stage, it's really it is just about playing around and finding what's going to be aesthetically pleasing once you put this together. So I'm going to go with the pleat effect because I like this and that's a pleat. And it was just follow that through the design of the top of the sleeve, I should say, and the whole, and the whole garment as well the top. No, yeah, that, looks, that looks okay. Don't want it to be too short. Well, let's see what happens. I may do three. Let me see, I'll do one more here. And then I'm going to then just baste one sleeve in and just see what it looks like. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try that and see what happens. The sleeve is based in. I'm gonna baste those into position and I like it. I do like it. I think because the pattern on the blouse is quite busy, that you won't be able to tell the speed is back to front for a start, but it's only slightly so you won't feel any kind of restriction. I've taken it in, a, in that the size as you know, and that's, yeah, the balance is there. It looks, it looks gorgeous. I like the fact that it's open, because remember I removed the buttons from the front and also from the cuff of the sleeve, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. That is nice. 
that's a, that is a statement sweep. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So what I'm gonna do now is put the other sleeve in, sew them in now, now that I'm happy with them. First of all, I'll sew down the, um, the little tucks there and then I'll set the sleeve in. Both sleeves are now in, which is excellent. This is the front and the back. I'm happy with the progress I'm making so far. It's almost done now. So yeah, this is the right side. Let's turn it to the wrong side. Let me just take out this basting stitch. For the sleeve. This is what it looks like on the inside, the wrong side. So what you want is a professional clean finish to the inside as well as the outside of your garment. So this is the back. The sleeves are excellent. Nicely sewed in. And this is the front all nice and flat and it has under stitching involved to keep it the facing down. Yeah. So I'm going to try it on again and then the only thing we need to figure out is the straps. And that means I've used everything on this garment. So what I was thinking, either have it, let me show you, let's bring this to the right side. Which would probably be a nice feature to the back since I've got this V that's happening here is perhaps, you know, let's see. Let's put some pins in, let me show you. So I've got one on that side. And then we've got this one on this side. I'm just roughly placing these. Just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking. And then maybe tie it and then that will pull it in. So that'll be an idea. The other option is to cut them in half and then do the same technique that I've just done here. Put them at the sides, one at the front and one at the back. Let's see, I like this. And then tie them or, or good thread into the buttonhole, so the buttonhole is being used. I just got to try it on then and make my mind up. Yes, I am happy. These sleeves so gorgeous. They are so gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna focus on the back. We're just turn around. I've decided to pull in at the back and just give a little bit of a feature to the V that's happening at the back. So I decided that I'm going to put some ties, ties here and thread them through the buttonhole that's already there, which is a bit different. Um, the other option was to have them at the sides, but I think it's just, it's just too much because of the sleeves and because I didn't want to, to interfere too much with what's going on with the sleeves. And I think it's given me a good fit. I mean, you can see the difference from when I first tried it on to now. So yeah, that's brilliant. I really do, yeah, I do love it. I, I do love this. It, it really is working out. Even the back, I will be honest, I'm not 100% happy with the back. 
I would say I'm 90% and that's good enough for me. It's going to do the job. I think it's at the right position as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. The ties are now sewn in. I'll just show you what it's like on the inside. And I just need to make up my mind now about how I'm going to tie it, whether I'm going to tie it in a bow, which I can do if I wish. Tie it in a bow. Or just in a knot. <laughs> but I decided to experiment with the buttonholes here. Because as you know, one of the ties has a buttonhole. So I could do this. Thread it through like this. And make use of the buttonhole itself. There we go. It's quite, it's quite a nice feature actually. I do believe that I know I would wear it like this. And all the other couple of um, ways I've also mentioned. But no, I like that. It's a nice feature. So my blouse is now complete and it's ready to be worn. So happy with the results. I thought I would uh, show you what it looks like without my power neck underneath and I'm happy. It's so gorgeous. Love the sleeves. I'm just turn on the back so you can have a look at the back and how I've tied it. I've only put it through one buttonhole but yeah I do like that. Yes it's nice yeah. Well I hope I have I hope that I have inspired you to go out there and do a similar project for yourself. That is what my channel's all about. It's about inspiring you and showing all the possibilities there are of refashioning clothing. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and please do share it with your friends and your family on all your different social platforms. And if you have any comments or queries, please put those in the comment box below and I will see you next time.